Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to get this Jupiter mission fulfilled and I'm gonna pull out all the stops. I've thought about it and I've decided that well we've really packed as much solar panelry as I can onto this thing and we don't have RTGs so yeah I think what I'm gonna do is just lock the batteries to begin with and uh, just save electric charge that way probably we're not going to end up with enough electric charge if we try and run the batteries all the way through the mission. So I don't know if uh, Flight Computer could have uh, turned them off and then brought them back online on its own because normally it can't, uh, we can't uh, toggle the fuel tanks so I assume electric charge is the same way. Uh, so I'm just going to have to do it manually but instead of doing it just when things go, go horribly awry I think I'm just gonna turn them off and uh, turn them back on again as part of the plan. So the plan is going to be that I'm gonna turn them off uh, when it gets out into Kerbin, uh, out into uh, uh, solar SOI, and then it's gonna be quote unquote programmed to turn on the batteries once it gets within Jupiter SOI, and then shortly after Jupiter SOI, it's going to make a maneuver to correct uh, to aim for its target which in this case is I believe Europa uh, yep uh, that is Europa the second moon of Jupiter second uh, Galilean moon of Jupiter and we don't seem to have the approach we want here so that's why we need to make the correction I don't know how much the correction will be but we do have some Delta V to work with uh, this stage has 241 but the next stage which is currently locked has uh, more it's not showing me right now but uh, we'll be able to make some maneuvers. I don't know whether we're going to get into full orbit around Jupiter very easily, whether we can get some gravity assist or not. That, that's an open question. Uh, maybe we'll get to take a look at that in Solar SOI before we head on over and shut the batteries during the transit. So I'm going to say that that's plan. And then after it makes a maneuver, uh, its initial maneuver on entering Jupiter SOI, it'll turn off the battery again and we'll say it is programmed to keep the battery off until it hits the orbit of uh, I think this is Ganymede isn't it or uh, hold on let me make sure I get my Jupiter moons correct so Io is the closest oh Callisto right Callisto is the outer one of the four Galilean moons so yep uh, let's, let's, let's all remember Io, Europa, Ganymede and then Callisto okay so yeah, maybe we can get something going, but uh, in any case, so once it hits the orbit of Callisto, I'll turn on the battery again, and then we'll just uh, assume that the battery is on all the way. So we'll pretend that that is a program in the system computer, and I am going to run it like that, because I don't think I could program it into remote tech even if I tried. Okay. So here we go, first out into Kerbin SOI. We will do a quick check if we can make some sort of adjustment uh, based on the fact that we'll probably get an extra patch conic level once we get out. And so maybe we'll be able to see where our orbit ends up. I mean, we have six times the battery power we need, but I think um, it's the square of distance, right? So right now we are at 146 kilometers away from the Sun. Uh, Jupiter is about 600 kilometers, oh no, uh, 800, kilo uh, 800 million kilometers away from the Sun. So that's uh, five times. So we're talking about 25 times less solar input. I don't think I have that. So yeah, we're, we're gonna have to be shutting off those batteries. And you know, I, uh, I built the craft based on the fact that I really can't put too much more solar panelry on this thing. Uh, now, if I, I mean, I guess huge solar panels could be a possibility, but it's really pushing it as it is. And I don't think I could have gotten enough solar panels to make it work. I mean, your Juno spacecraft is that the one? Yeah, it's got s huge solar panels, so it must be the one. Yeah. So uh, Juno has huge solar panels in order to get enough solar input at the sun, but it's much much smaller than this. It says Juno will receive 4% as much sunlight as it would around Earth. So, yeah, that, actually I got it exactly right. It's uh, 
uh, 25, a factor of 25 less. Um, oh, it's actually, it's actually heavier than this. Wait a minute, so uh, it's actually heavier than this. I think I've just got very inefficient cores. No, I don't. Wait a minute. Okay, so it's got 400 watts of power. It's 3.6 tons. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've just got some very inefficient cores or very inefficient solar panels. Something like that. It's a bigger probe. Okay, so now we have a uh, outgoing trajectory. Let me focus view not on Ike, but on Jewel. Actually, uh, on Elu. Now we don't even have a indication of an encounter. I do have a reaction wheel on here, right? Yeah, a little tiny one up there. Let me try and turn to the retrograde marker. And then I'll do some RCS burn. Well, let me try and plot it out. Probably better than, uh, than just doing it blind. Smarty SS, go ahead and hold retrograde and I'll start plotting. Okay, well, good thing I uh, checked it out because right now nothing I do produces an encounter with anything. There's no sign of any sort of encounter. Not even the uh, slightest hint. Oh, wait. Slightest hint. Uh, that's not much of a hint, though. Uh, okay, well, there's an encounter. I'll take it back. So, 0.5 meters per second gets us some encounter with it. Okay, let me try and... Uh, well, I can't imagine how much more fine-tuned I can get, but maybe on fine controls I can do a very, very careful burn. We'll see. So, okay. Well, now I've hit it. Let's see how close I can bring it. Wow, there's just no beneficial effect from this encounter at all. You see, we encounter it here. So, we're coming in, we encounter it. Note that our resulting trajectory on the outward bound leg hasn't changed at all. And our encounter with, with Europa is at 829 kilometers. I can bring that down. We, we can have a crash course even. And you can see the trajectory hasn't changed at all. I mean, there's a tiny little change, maybe, but not much. So it's not like with the Moon's a Jewel where you can uh, get some sort of benefit from it. And it doesn't matter which side I'm on. Unless I'm going right through the planet. So there's 300 kilometers. It still doesn't do anything. I mean, except for a minor perturbation. How much will it take to get into orbit around... Oh, it's not letting me make a maneuver. Well, I'm guessing it's going to take quite a lot to try and actually get into orbit around Jupiter, but... Alright, uh, we've got a planned maneuver. Let's see about this. I'm just going to have the reaction will turn us to the node in question, and then I'll have RCS actually take care of the maneuver. Okay, here we go. RCS on. Wait three seconds, because that's one of the things that signal delay actually delays, is the activation and deactivation of SAS and RCS. That doesn't delay thrust. Nope. I press H. Does that immediately. Okay. Caps lock fine controls. Okay, that's 0.0. .0. RCS off. Let's see what it did. Well, we've got our encounter again. And it's actually a bit too close. <laughs> Uh, hold on, RCS back on. We might as well get as close as possible while we're while we're doing this. It's gonna be very fast. I doubt. I don't even know if I have enough time to get a low. Maybe if I program remote tech, I forget if I've action group the. Uh oh, the other way. Okay. Well, that'll do. I can't do it much finer than that because I've got caps lock on already and uh, one key press already does what that just did. Alright, RCS off. And now let us lock the batteries. And then we'll head on over there. I don't think uh, this core has... Oh, it does have a battery. Okay. Well, here we go. 
lock. Uh, I'm going to pre-activate this antenna and target Kerbin slash Earth. So we'll have both antennas going, just in case. Now instead of node, I want let's uh, no, just point prograde. While it's reorienting, I think there's no electric charge except in this upper core. Yeah, now it's using 160 watts. How much did the Ju uh, Juno mission take? Let me see. It said 400 watts, but I don't think it generates that at Ju uh, Jupiter. Oh yeah, no, it actually generates 486 watts at Jupiter, declining to 420 watts as radiation degrades the cells. It actually produces 12 to 14 kilowatts of power, Juno does. Huge solar panels. Hmm. Okay, well, we're pointed in the right direction. Got locked this battery now. And we now have no connection. But I'm hoping that I can unlock when we reach Jupiter SOI. Okay, so that's the plan. Well, let's go over there. Okay, we are in Jupiter SOI, so let's see if things can come back online. Okay, we have electric charge there. Electric charge here. Still reading no connection. Uh oh. Caps lock works. Is it range of the antennae? Got two of those suckers. Those are our best antenna, by the way. I couldn't put anything better. We don't have anything better right now. Oh boy. While pretending to have it programmed to do stuff, maybe I should have actually programmed it to do something. Um, we are gonna pass by Europa. Just not gonna have any signal back home. Let me just see if this is, uh, what kind of problem this is. Let me jump out and come back in and see if a connection pops up. You know how that's happened before. Just as a last resort here. Um, now this is strange. Okay, so I click on it, but I can't click on the fly button. Here, fly button is lit. Here, fly button is lit. Here, fly button is not lit. That one fly button is lit. That's the that's the spent portion of it, which I believe does have local control. Uh, but uh, here, wait, it, it actually shows a uh, connection back, doesn't it? Hold on, no, that's the that's its orbit. But technically, I shouldn't need a connection in order to jump to something. Fly. Fly. Fly gets lit. But here, it doesn't get lit. I should still be able to go to it. I should still be able to, um, you know, destroy it, terminate it. It doesn't light up either of those options. That is very strange. Okay, let me quit the program. I just went back to Space Center. Let me just quit the program and then come back in. See what happens. Okay, I've restarted. Let's take a look on Escape Trajectory from Jewel. Okay, well now I can fly. And... But I don't think we still have... I don't think we have connection. Let's see. That was a weird little glitch. That's the first time I've ever seen that glitch where we can't click fly. Hmm. Yep, still no connection. Taking a look at the situation, I wonder if it would have been better to connect through Mars. No, oh well, no. Mars Mars is just about the same distance right now. It's over the uh no, it's further, sorry. I was looking we could this this was a possibility. Maybe just a little bit closer to this alternate uh target. I don't know if it had communicate it seems to have a communication relay back to Earth. But yeah, long shot anyway. So maybe I should have put four of these little antennae on. Not too sure that would have been enough either. Let's 
Well, since this is the problem, let's go take a look at the tech tree and see about larger solar panels. Now, I could just tweak scale them up, of course, but that's not the favorite way of doing things. Let's see if we can get better solar panels in general and better antennae. I mean, science-wise, we're not too bad off, 450, but then again, a lot of this stuff costs a lot. Uh, extendable RCS boom? No, and we don't need a claw, and it's non RP0 anyway. Um, this stuff over here is all engines and fuel stuffs. Problem is, unlike in 1.0, you can't see what's ahead very easily. But presumably, the stuff I'm looking for is going to be down here. This says non RP0. Uh, I would like photovoltaic panels and such but it looks like every advanced solar panel is non RP0 okay um, how about uh, antennae communication wh wh where is the communication stuff at least I can see the location of it and okay well it seems to be in this row this is our Flectron KR7. So I suppose it'd be around here, just logically speaking. But this one doesn't have any new communication arrays. Well, uh, let's just unlock this one. Let's see. Um, there's a dish. That'll definitely cover Jupiter. It's not RP0, though. Wait a minute. Well, uh, th this one was RP0. This one says non-RP0. Is there any particular reason why? Uh, let me do some basic analysis. All right. So uh, 0.18 charge per second, cone angle 1.4 degrees, uh, 200 uh, million kilometers. And there's a billion kilometers, a little bit more charge, tighter cone angle. I, I don't understand why this shouldn't be just supported by RP0. Is there some difference that max temperature is fine? It's heavier. It's generally in the right spot. I mean, I don't see why it's not RP0 compatible. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend it is. Now let's do some analysis on the solar panel array, which uh, seems to be something we need. Um, this this has the solar panel arrays that we've been using, 11.3 per minute. Let's let me just do a quick calculation on mass to electric charge. Seems like the fair thing to do. So, uh, well, electric charge uh, per minute, uh, let, let's do per second. So it's 0 0.188 per second, and I'll divide that by the mass. Okay, 19.2 is the number I get per ton, basically. And here we've got 2.7 per second, divide by 0 0.0884, 30. So uh, this one over here was 19 uh, units per ton. This one over here, this one gives us 30 units per ton. Which seems fair since we've improved in technology. So if this one is supported by RP0, it's hard to see why this one shouldn't be. When we've already spent more technology to get it. I think this is fair logic. So uh, I'm going to try and unlock this. Uh, we need 10 science basically and then we can unlock this and that's our priority. Let's see what we can do about that by visiting the science archives. Geiger counter we've pretty much milked but maybe uh, there's something in the area of... We could send a probe to the moon. Higher the moon, near moon, near Kerbin. We, we haven't done a mystery goo high over Kerbin, it looks like. Right? We've got near Kerbin. Well we, well, we haven't done high over Kerbin. I mean, Earth. Uh, mobile material study. We've only done near... We haven't done a high either. So, we could toss uh, mystery goo and uh, materials lab high over Kerbin and probably get some of this. I don't know if we'll get 10 out of that or not. Hopefully. Okay, so that's an idea. But let's take a look at our contracts because we're running out of funds. Starting with our existing contracts, we need to do these atmospheric scans on Mars. 
Science Day from Space Around Mars. We've only got 330 days. Do we have something around Mars to uh, send home that science? Let me take a look. And then uh, Gilly, I believe, is one of the moons. It's uh, Deimos, isn't it? That I had trouble landing on, and that's why we haven't fulfilled that. Uh, how much will failure cost us? That'll cost us 60000 so if we expect that we're going to lose that, perhaps. Oh, no, uh, it looks like that one doesn't have a deadline, so we won't lose that. What's the point of having a failure thing if we never actually get to the point where we have a failure? I don't know. Um, a surface outpost on the moon is very tempting, actually, but complicated. Satellite in the geosynchronous orbit of Kerbin, Earth. We could do that, and it asks asks for a mystery goo unit. We could toss on a a science lab. In addition, and get the science that we want, and it already gives us extra science anyway. Okay, uh, why don't we uh, have this geosynchronous satellite contract? Seems like that's exactly what we want. We'll have to launch from uh, Kuru to get the inclination of 3.9 degrees instead of the 20 odd degrees that we normally get. But okay, so uh, let me build a satellite to launch that geosynchronous satellite and that will be what we want. Oh, uh, science day from space around Kerbin. We could probably do that as well at the same time. So let's pick that up. Anything else we can bundle into this thing? Doesn't look like it. This other stuff is elsewhere. Okay. But first actually let me check out uh, Mars and see if we can get some science from it. Probably the only stuff we have in orbit around Mars is just communication stuff, but we'll see. So here we are with the Angua M around Mars, and if you recall, this one had the the sat the dish up here, but it actually had a lander stage on top of it. Uh, you can see the weird solar panel configuration I needed to use in order to get enough solar input, and it does have good solar generation, uh, more than it needs. Uh, of course, it was carrying the the lander as well, so I had to supply that core with power just in case. But uh, tucked in here, we do have a mystery goo unit. I, I suppose we've already done mystery goo around here. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. Uh, I've clicked it and I have to wait eight minutes. Hold on. Well, transmitting it isn't going to tell us anything. Is there any other instrument on here? We've already done that mystery goo, and in this location, this is only going to be able to, I mean, 800 meters per second might boost us high if we want to. Let's check if uh, high over Mars has been done yet with the mystery goo. Nope, uh, high over Mars has not been done with the mystery goo, so let's boost that satellite up and get the high over Mars reading if possible. I don't know if that delta V is enough to get it high, but we'll just as expend it and see what happens. Okay, well, best thing to do will be to burn out of periapsis. Our app, app, uh, our apoapsis is already pretty high. Uh, we'll we'll check briefly whether the existing apoapsis is good enough if we're going around the right way. Otherwise, uh, we can boost out to. It looks like the maximum is about uh, twenty thousand kilometers or so. So that's the other option. But are we going? Yeah, we're going around backwards, so uh, we're not heading to Apoapsis. We'll just boost up. It'll provide better communications anyway. Looks like we should start around here. Actually, probably past the point. Okay, well, I'll see you close to Apoapsis, and we'll see whether we get the high reading or not. Okay, well, I think it's already high over Mars. Let's see. Usually the low over is a very tight range, so observe mystery goo, time warp for 8 minutes. Okay, yeah, 13 science. Alright, well let's transmit that data. It should fulfill the contract as well. Yep, fulfill that contract.
Okay, and this satellite is still alive. It's still got plenty of electric charge to work with, and it'll provide communication support from here at a much higher level. Okay, well, let's unlock that technology that I was looking at, but we'll still do the geosynchronous satellite for more funds. Okay, well, uh, so disclaimer, we are going to be using non-RP0 parts. I just can't see how to avoid that. Uh, yep, here we go. And that'll be for the revamp of the Jewel mission, and probably the revamp of some other missions as well as we try and do other things. I'm not even going to make any question of it. I'm going to research this part. Heck, let's just research a whole bunch of these things. Uh, what was that, actually? That uh, Commutron 32? Uh, sure, why not? Not the battery, though. We've got a ways to s store that power. Okay. Okay, so I've built a somewhat new rocket. It's, it's probably just a variant on a rocket I've built before. We've got RL-10 upper stage here. Uh, let me just uh, bring these fairings out. Uh, it's an RL-10 A3-3A and then a J2S and then five RS-27s, a variant on the H1. Now if I recall correctly we had some gimbling issues with the with these engines before. I seem to recall having to turn off gimbling and rely on vernier thrusters. I'm not too sure if I still have to do that, especially since our thrust weight ratio isn't going to be beyond 4.4 with that stage. It might have been a very heavy rocket, that, I mean a very uh, light rocket and uh, powerful stage that I had that problem with, but we'll see. Um, other than that, uh, J2S has got to provide us with most of the Delta V to orbit. And then the RL-10. This stage, I, I basically configured it for the optimal, given that it's going to be controlled by this Agena core. And so uh, if you add up the cores of the actual probe, these can carry one ton. That's why the probe is one ton, by the way, because that's the max that these can control. And it's sort of odd that basically all of my design is based completely around these arbitrary numbers <laughs> that the, these arbitrary numbers that limit our ability to control the vessels which of course uh, in real life they don't actually build cores that can only control 300 tons I mean that's not, that's not how it works really uh, but I find that my design choices in this with RP0 are completely controlled by the capacity of these cores and so if you add up one ton for those two combined plus this 12 tons you get 13 tons and so of course uh, the total mass of this upper portion with the fairings on is 13 tons or close to it and then uh, you work your way down uh, this has a capacity of 120 tons uh, it's a little bit looser for these I've uh, decided on the burn times based more on thrust weight ratio for the launch stage and uh, the upper stage to a lesser extent uh, we could have gone much longer on the burn time on this but we really didn't need it. I was intending to have this stage re-enter and the RL-10 finish the burn. And then the RL-10 finishes the burn, gets us out to geosync, and it, this stage is sized so it could do much more than that. It, it could make a, a Mars transfer with a payload with uh, of a ton or so. It could make a lunar transfer with a much heavier payload actually. But uh, that's about the shape of it. And uh, just the sheer size of the cores is also interesting to note. I mean, the Surveyor core, of course, is a much larger size. Yeah, so if you want to make a small-sized payload, you can't really use that very well. Uh, so we are using the new antenna, the Reflectron, Reflectron KR-14s. We are not using the new solar panels because we don't need to. The power consumption of this probe is too low to justify that. Uh, all together, um, well, I could size these up a bit. The drain is, it says 0.16. I think it's only reading the core though. So uh, these cores uh, at maximum 80 watts. 80 watts without time warp. And so that's what it's reading there, I think. This actually requires a 0.2 charge per second. So if we uh, face our tail to the sun, it should work. And we're not going to be blocked by the Earth much. We're at geosynchronous orbit. Uh, it's high enough that the Earth is not going to come in the way. So it's a close call. Maybe I should resize the panels for a little bit. 
Um, but then that that gives us insufficient avionics. All right, well we'll keep it to this. Um, while we're, I mean, in theory, the cores should go into low power mode during time warp. We should have enough. Yeah, we should have enough. But I've said that before, and I've been wrong. Anyway, that's about the size of it. For some reason, uh, Mechjeb is not reading the Delta V of the probe. We do have MMH and N204 here uh, in the probes and in this one little tank, but uh, for some reason, even though the one kilonewton thruster is configured to that fuel, it's not reading its Delta V, which is about 700 meters per second. Not much. It's mainly for, uh, for the thrusters here. We've got MMH and N204 RCS thrusters is really what the fuel is for. And that's to adjust it, uh, fine-tune it to get to the right orbit. Anyway, that's that's the idea. It's a little bit expensive. I could probably have figured out a cheaper launcher. But on the bright side, we're not using an F1 down here. Uh, the reason for that being the F1 costs 20,000 uh, 20, each, whereas these cost only 1,700, so this stage is 8,500. Much cheaper. So that's the logic. Yep, okay, anyway, I think all the important parts are spoken for, and it is going to be time to launch. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad. We are at Kuru as planned, so there we are. Gusink Sat, I've decided to call it because it's carrying a goo container. Gusink Sat, ready to launch, and that is our target orbit. I don't know if I can uh, line up with the longitude of ascending node they want right now. We might as well fix that once we're further out anyway. It's probably better. Uh, they want 90.5 degrees. I can't really see where that is. Uh, we also need to reduce our inclination from 5.2 degrees to 3.9. So we'll have to do that out there as well. We definitely have enough delta V as long as nothing else goes wrong. So. Let's see if anything else goes wrong. Now I have action group 9 and 0 to turn off the gimbling on the outside and inner engines if necessary because I remember that problem. So I'll keep that in mind. But otherwise, let's just uh, see how this rocket works. Okay, already I see a little bit of over gimbling there. off to Smart ASS. Looks a little bit better right now under Smart ASS's control. Hey, this is a rare occasion where I should use S-Bell sort of see that being a good idea. Hmm. Not really. Don't know where it thinks my pitch is. No, 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 uh, no. That's not good at all. That, that was a bad idea. I'm not pitch heading. For some reason I thought I should be at a heading of 60. That's not right at all. Okay, well, everything looking nominal so far. We don't have any decouplers to worry about this time. Okay, now we're getting oscillations. I killed Gimbal on something. Uh, that's not looking good at all, whatever's happening right there. Looks like the entire thrust plate is wiggling. What the heck is... What's that about? what's happening there, but we'll let it burn out. That's the best choice at this point. Okay, set. 
Ignition. Alright, well that was weird. I can't remember if I've seen the thrust plate multi-adapter swing around like that before. Let's get RCS on to help out with stability here. Okay. Yep, that was a bit dodgy. Could do with a heavier second stage and a lighter first stage then. If the first stage runs out faster, we won't get to that point where we have the wiggles. And then we'd still have a very cheap first stage, compared to an F1 stage for instance. I think that might be a plan. And certainly we have the TWR on this stage already. We could extend the stage without any problem. Could give it an extra minute or two without uh, going past the J2's normal burn time. Uh, it's uh, maximum burn time on the Apollo missions. Uh, the third stage engine burned for 8 minutes and 20 seconds altogether. So we can burn up to that. We've only got it for 5 minutes right now. And we actually start off with a thrust weight ratio higher than 1, which isn't strictly necessary in this case. I'm gonna hold off on fairing set, but it seems to me like they might be a little bit tight, as they have been before. No point taking any risks. Okay, there we go. We want, uh, oh, it disappeared on me. Want a longitude of ascending node of 90.5 degrees. So we've got a long ways to go on that. Inclination I'm not going to try and fix until we get higher. We're definitely, I don't think we're at the ascending or descending node with respect to the target orbit. Hmm, inclination is going up. Uh, longitude of ascending node is going down though. Maybe it's a fair trade-off. We're definitely not the best place to fix either one. Maybe I'll just aim a little bit more towards our current course. Stop trying to fix the longitude of ascending node. Okay, a uh, different look at things than normal. This is South America. Is that the Amazon right there? Yep, that's the mouth of the Amazon. Okay, five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. I got to orbit. I was hoping to deorbit this stage, but I guess, uh, well, it finished up uh, in orbit anyway. I thought it would be short, but uh, we got all the way. Okay, fairing set. Solar panels out. Communication antennae out. Okay. And those are the antennae that will communicate with the ground. This one will communicate to any active vessel, that's why it's the powerful one, right? The KR-14 can communicate to Jupiter definitely, so we won't have that. Actually, you know, maybe we could catch our probe. I just thought of that. Our probe isn't that far in. If we tune to active vessel, there's a, there's a chance, right? I guess there's a chance. Alright, uh, we don't have to stage set until we actually want to light that thing. Save Because uh, those rockets are meant to sell the fuel anyway. So we'll have this stage tag along until we plan our burn. Okay, something roughly like that would be good. Alright, let me lock this RCS tank and the upper tanks. I think two minutes I think it's uh, it's an eight minute stage so this should be about right okay throttle up set and ignition and I'll unlock this RCS tank okay we're getting close to our target inclination so I'm gonna actually deviate from the node I don't think we need to decrease that inclination anymore. Now the RL-10 has 
10 possible relights, so I think we can make all the adjustments with it if necessary. Probably a lot of the adjustments will be made using the RCS system rather than the actual engine. So we'll have it tag along for as long as possible. Okay, engine shut down. Alright, so we've got 2,296 meters per second left in this stage, which should be plenty. And uh, we're headed out. Looks like a, well, good approximation to that orbit. Not quite there, but we'll make adjustments. Okay, let me uh, tune the main dish to the active vessel. Okay, we are at Apoapsis, or, well, three minutes off from it. Let's point prograde. I think we have plenty of fuel in here. We'll be using the RCS to settle us down. Oh, it overdid it. It overdid it. Ah. Okay, okay. Okay. We are prograde. Let me tell Smart ASS to actually hold that now. And RCS Ford. Settling the fuel down. Guess we're close enough. Let's fire it. Oh, all this is going on. Let me just zoom out and see. Any indication that uh, it's a link to Jewel? Nope, no indication of that. But of course, active vessel isn't that probe right now. If we jump to the probe, then it'll be the active vessel. Wait, I need to cut this at the target periapsis. Well, not the target periapsis, but close to it anyway. Okay, well, we're not quite there yet. Sort of like this. Hmm. It's like that's the place to make a maneuver. Well, this correction looks like a start. It doesn't get us quite to the right uh, PE and AP, though. But at least it, uh, I think this will correct the longitude of ascending node thing. We're at the right inclination, just in the wrong place. Now, as I was trying to check, do we have communication? Well, we have a line there. I don't see a little green line connecting back, though. I think it's still goners. Okay, selling the fuel down. And ignition. Okay, brought the inclination down, but now it's going to go back up again. Didn't reverse it all the way, so that's good. Okay, that looks good. Uh, inclination 3.9, longitude of ascending node pretty much 90, or at least within one. Oh. Oh no! This doesn't count as a mystery goo for the contract. Fudge. We're in the right orbit. Just doesn't like this. Mi I forgot that those contracts don't like this mystery goo container. And I don't understand why, because it does have the same marker. Stupid contracts. Okay, uh, well, we'll have to send another one up here with the other kind of Mystery Goo container. But we can observe Mystery Goo and transmit that science, which we haven't done before. From high over Kerbin slash Earth. Well, this is the right orbit. Uh, let's make put it into full satellite mode instead of having all this stuff with it and we're wasting a little bit of gas but um, we're gonna lose electric charge if we don't dump the dump the Gina core so checking that everything is right right okay okay and ignition and we have to unlock the these tanks Huh. So, I mean, the the mystery goo unit didn't, or the reaction wheel, not, neither of them, I checked, neither of them said that they had a problem with fuel crossfeed. 
That seems like they do. This is important information. Yeah, so they don't feel crossfeed. One of them doesn't. So I'll have to keep that in mind for the future. But it doesn't matter, because we've got the RCS thrusters to make the adjustments if we need to. Okay, and now we have the charge we need, so that's good. The antenna is active. And observe materials bay. Alright, let's transmit that data. So we have a working commsat with a very long range. That's positive. We didn't fulfill the contract, which is a negative, so we'll have to slap on the other goo units. Um, learn something about the fuel feed situation. That's important. And we'll check on the Jupiter probe and see if it's got communication or not. If not, then it's probably not, because the ground stations already have quite a long range. It would be able to communicate with the ground station better, even better than it would com uh, communicate with this. But let me double check. Yeah, it doesn't have connection. It would have had connection, if it was possible, it would have had connection with the ground stations anyway, since those have a longer range. Really, we need to put the KR, uh, KR-14 on this, otherwise it won't work. You can see that the KR-14 on the GooSync satellite does have a range to reach here. It's just that this one doesn't have the range to reach back. Okay, well, so that's the situation. And, well, on the bright side, we have unlocked the technology to get better solar panels. We have the technology to get better satellite dish. And so we can try this again. We also need to try the other other contract again. We did fulfill a contract, by the way. We did... Oh, well, a science day from space around Duna. Okay, I thought we had a science day from space around Kerbin, right? Uh... I thought we picked up a science data from space around Kerbin. Okay, let me clear up all the contracts. It's about time I did, did this. And so we'll get the alerts when appropriate. Yeah, I thought I had that contract, but uh, it doesn't seem to have shown it. Okay, anyway, but the idea is we have other things to do and we will consider uh, continue to proceed on this. Now, there's also the fact that we could improve our Mars launch thanks to the new technology, so that's something else to think about. But I will leave that for the next episode. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.